everybody. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for a minute and ask the Lord one more time. He is worthy of all praise and glory and honor. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for a brand new mercy you have allowed us to see, oh God. Lord, we ask you right now to forgive us of our sins, thoughts, words, and deeds. And Lord, we ask you even now to come into this place and let your presence reign. Lord, somebody needs a healing, somebody needs a breakthrough, somebody needs a deliverance, oh God. And Lord, we ask you right now to come and walk through this place, oh Lord, from door to door, from window to window, so that your glory will be shown in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. 
worship him in spirit and his truth because he's worthy to be praised. Too much. 
Lord is in his holy temple. Yeah. Let all the earth keep silent before him. And the church of God will say amen. 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 Be seated. Gracious and heavenly Father, most holy and wise God that is in heaven. Lord, here we are, O oh God, just a few of thy number servants that have come today, O oh Father God, Lord, just to lift up your holy name and to say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, Father God, we ask that you be with us, O oh Lord. Lord, be with us, O oh Father God, in spirit and in mind, O oh God, as we acknowledge you as the almighty God and to welcome you in this place. Have your way, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, in Jesus' name. And the church of God will say amen. amen. and universal. Amen. Let us now reverently and sincerely declare what you believe by the use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence you shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
Mary. Amen. And who is going to be the first one to, amen, recite? Amen. But we thank God. Amen. We are very short, a very short time from returning back to our church. Thank you, Lord. 
We thank you for what you're doing in our church. And we thank you that we're going to have an opportunity to go back there and worship, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And while we're going back, Lord, let us take a more righteous attitude, Lord, through those doors, Lord. Let your spirit rule, reign, and abide there, Lord. And we say thank you for that, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You brought many back to us, Lord. We thank you for for, for Tawana, Lord, how you healed her body, how you touched her, Lord, how she's sitting in the church on this morning. We thank you for that, Lord. We say hallelujah. We thank you for Brother Carver, Dr. Carver, how you took him to Africa and you took him back, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we asking you to bless Sister Agnes, Lord. You know what she's going through, Lord. She's not, probably not the only one that's going through procedures. I have something going on this week, Lord, but in the name of Jesus, we trust it and abide in you, Lord, and we know everything is going to be all right. Just like you did for Sister Jackie, you will do it for you, any and every one of us, Lord. And we say thank you. Many have lost loved ones. People are dying here and there, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We ask you on this morning just to wrap their hearts and wrap their souls and wrap their minds, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Give them the peace that, that passes all understanding that only you have to give, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord. Lord. We say thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. We say hallelujah. And Lord, we ask you to bless our church on this morning. We ask you to bless Reverend Drake as he bring us a, a ring of word on this morning. Let it pierce and penetrate our hearts, Lord, that we won't leave the same way we came in here. In the name of Jesus. While you're blessing him, we ask you to bless the pastor. Keep him wrapping, anoint him, guide his footsteps, guide his mouth, Lord. In the name of Jesus, anoint where he steps, anoint what he hears, Lord, anoint what he sees, Lord. Keep him covered in your blood, Lord, that every metropolitan every Zion church will be a church where people say, the Lord Jesus Christ abide in spirit. We say thank you. We thank you for everything that's going to go on on this service, on this Holy Communion Day, as we remember Jesus and how he shed his blood, Lord. When we take the communion, that we will remember while we are taking it, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. We have so much to thank you for. We can't thank you for it all in one setting, Lord. But keep it on our hearts and our minds as we go our way, Lord. As we go through our day, as we go through our week. To continue to pray for each other. Continue to pray for all the sick and the shut in, Lord. The incarcerated, the widows, Lord. The children, Lord. The hungry, Lord. The homeless, Lord. We put them on the altar of mercy on this morning, Lord. And we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We bless your holy and righteous name. We turn this service over to you. We invite the anointing. We invite the Holy Ghost. We invite the Spirit. We invite the fire. We invite the water, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Most of all, we invite you. In Jesus' name. Please forgive me, Lord, for what I may not have prayed, but you know everything. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Continue to allow the Holy Spirit to sup on our behalf. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
believe that, put your hands together. trustees and I will do an initial walk through the church to identify any shortcomings, deficiencies, things of that nature to bring to the general contractor who will do a walk through it on possibly Wednesdays. The only thing that is left in the church now are some minor things that need to be done, such as kind of trimming out the pulpit, finishing up downstairs, painting things of that nature, for which he said could possibly happen within a week to a week and a half. It's a great possibility that on the third Sunday we may be able to worship there. It's been hard. It's been challenging. Must ask ourselves, is there anything too hard for God? And we know the answer to that is nothing yeah. is too hard for the Lord. If we miss the third Sunday, definitely on the fourth Sunday, amen. I know that many might be out of town, amen. But still, amen, be with us in spirit as we walk back in Queen Spring Street, amen. We will also have, amen, our first Sunday service communion service on the first Sunday in June All right. in our beautiful and <laughs> These are all spoken in faith and confidence that this will happen. Yes. And then on at 3 p.m. on the 4th, Bishop Kenneth Monroe will be here to deliver the message for the rededication service at 3 p.m. I would say to you, you better learn, uh, uh, should I say, think about coming early on that day. For we're inviting everybody. Amen. Amen. So we'll rededicate the church. Somebody will ask, why are you rededicating the church? When you have spent $1.3 million on a repair, that's almost a brand new church. And God knows we all to rededicate the church. Some things that will be done after, but that's all right. We want to occupy Cool Spring Street. Is that all right? All right. God bless you all. Amen. Thank God. Thank you for your patience in waiting. It's not been easy. I could sit here and tell you all that we've gone through. But what difference is that going to make now? Well, the point is that we're getting ready to return. Amen. 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 And amen. All right, now it's time for the children meditation moment. Our children director is coming. Amen. Sister Brenda is coming. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. <laughs>
Okay, here is the question. If it takes 20 minutes to hard boil one egg, how long does it take to hard boil two eggs? Hey, we got some stars in here. The answer is 20 minutes. It doesn't take any longer to boil two eggs than it does to boil one. Okay, here's another question. A farmer had 15 sheep and all but nine died. How many sheep does the farmer have left? Nine. There are nine sheep left. Remember, I said that all but nine of them died. I tricked some of you with this question, didn't I? But listening is an, is an important tool that can help you improve. So listening is the key. All right, so school will be ending for this year in a couple of weeks. <laughs> you're excited, baby. <laughs> so you are excited to be out for the summer. Well, there are a few things that will happen before the end of school. Yes, it's test time. That's right. End of year testing is coming soon. Are you ready? Huh? Wrong answer. Are you ready? Yes. If you aren't sure, then consider these things. Teachers are starting to review information that they've covered this year that may be on the test. Mm -hmm. If you don't understand, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Ask for special help if you need it. Get plenty of rest, eat healthy, and think positive about your ability to complete the test with excellent score. Mm -hmm. And don't miss any day of school for the rest of the year. I'll say that again. Don't miss any day of school for the rest of the year. The day you miss is the day you're going to miss something. Mm -hmm. I just saw on television a couple of days ago a story about a student in Florida who scored a perfect score on the SAT. So, yes, a perfect score, 1,600. Can you imagine how much work he had to put into scoring a perfect score on the SAT? So, James 1 and 17 says, good and perfect gift comes from above. The key to uh, getting your reward is, and I've got another verse from James. I lost my, my place. Anyway, <laughs> it says, uh, faith without works is dead. So I know we all know that. Faith without works is dead. So the key is work. I challenge you to tap into your gift and do the work and receive your reward. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to use our talents and abilities in the way you would have us to use them. We will be careful to give you all the honor and the glory. Amen. 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 All right, goodbye, boys and girls. Remember to work hard and ask questions.
one I know that knows the word of the Lord very well. Amen. 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 He can preach. Amen. amen. Give him a couple of amens. He's like a hoop a little bit. <laughs> God, 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 God. Amen. 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 God be the glory. Amen. When I grow up, I'm going to preach just like him. Amen. 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 And I thank God. Amen. For that. Amen. He will come in his own way and to deliver. Amen. The message for the day. Hear him. Amen. For his grace. Let us now have, amen, the free message of the songs, this choir, this great choir is going to come and to sing to the glory of God. And thereafter that, amen, we will hear, my dear brother, amen. Yes, Brother Cleveland has something he wants to say. Amen. words were read Saturday, April 29th at College Heights Presbyterian Church at our homegoing service. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you.
you agree with us. Right. For whatever time it is, we know we serve a Savior that will not pass us by. If it's joy that we need, he gives it to us. If it's peace that we need, he gives it to us. Even if it's patience that we need, he gives it to us. Hey, Amen. I know a Savior that didn't pass me by. Amen. Amen. 40 years ago at Federal State. <laughs> and I'm glad he didn't pass me by. Had he, not, had he passed me by, I don't think I'd be standing here today. Amen. 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 We thank God for this wonderful service yeah. this morning. Amen. We thank God for all of you here in your respectable places. We, we just give honor to our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God the Father, yeah. Yeah. the Holy Spirit, yeah. amen. amen to our pastor and uh -huh. the First Lady and yeah. to his family, to yeah. all of you members and visitors of the Evans Metropolitan Church and yeah. to all the officers in their respectable <coughs> places. I bring you greetings mm -hmm. yeah. in the name of our Lord and Savior. Jesus, the Christ. Amen. 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 Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. I was riding here this morning and often I go through Langdon Street and I turn up and I come back through a, a certain path that always puts me out on Rose Hill Road. And I've been going that way so long, it just dawned on me this morning, why are you always going this way? <laughs> so as I set the stop sign right across from a certain house, I hear a voice say, Miss Lottie McCoy. Oh my God. And then I began to see Peter Rabbit and Uncle Paul driving that old green bus and the blue and white bus. And I say, my God, I remember her praying for me as a boy, but she did not know I would ride past her house every day going to church and to think of her. But we thank God for her and Peter Rabbit. Mr. Paul and the great legacy that they yeah. left in yeah. this church. Amen. I often remember praying with Miss McCoy and listening to her with the famous petition, Lord, I want you to clean this house. I want you to clean this church. I want you to start from the back and sweep it through all the way to the pool. Does anybody remember those prayers? Yeah. Amen. Praise God. It's so wonderful. You know, we, we are a family in the body of Christ, and I know it's been a difficult time as we, we uh, have to encounter the home goings and celebrations and, and funeralize our loved ones and friends. Uh, it just seems like the process never stops. And when you are getting a break in your family, someone else is catching it in their family. But there's one thing I want you to know this morning, that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And those of us that are gone long, we are all part of one family. And I believe one day we can say like David, when his baby had to die because of his sin, he said, I, he will not come to me, but I will go to him. Amen. Get ready, church, to go on with him. Uh, this is going to be somewhat of a communion meditation. My focus is going to be more on teaching than preaching this morning, so I ask that, that you bear with me if we don't get to a hoop. I feel that this contents of this teaching is critical right, and it's right. something that we need to hear on such an occasion mm -hmm. as the Lord suffer. Mm -hmm. As a theme this morning, I will talk about Eat, eating, drinking, or else. Mm -hmm. Or I might say it this way. Eat, drink, or else. Yeah. <laughs> eat, drink, or 
feelings or sub thing. The communion behind the communion. Our scripture text reading will be coming from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6, and I'll begin in reading at verses 47 down through verse 58. And they read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. Mm -hmm. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then said Jesus unto them, Verily, verily, there it goes again, truly, truly, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Amen. 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 Eat, drink, or else. <laughs> Prior to Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River by John the Baptist, John spoke these words in John 1 and 29. John boldly spoke these words. Behold the Lamb of God which takes away or take it away the sin of the world in the presence of many witnesses. As we follow the life of Christ in scripture, common conclusions are drawn about his teachings, miracles, and many aspects of his life, from his birth unto his ascension into heaven. From these conclusions, I believe that we can agree that nobody can teach like Jesus. Uh, I believe we can agree that Nobody can heal like Jesus. Mm -hmm. I believe that we can agree when we read various other sources and other books, even the Quran, nobody worked miracles like Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe we can agree when we look at the woman taken in the very act of adultery and say, nobody can forgive sins mm -hmm. like Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, nobody knew the thoughts of hearts like Jesus. Mm -hmm. For several times in scriptures we see where Jesus was able to discern the thoughts of men's hearts and give them an answer to questions long before they even asked them. Yeah. And no one has ever risen from the dead like him. In addition to showing himself alive to the same ones that had witnessed his crucifixion mm -hmm. as he took his final breath by giving up the ghost or his spirit. That's right. Since Jesus was the Lamb of God, he realized the necessity to teach his disciples and the Jews about the sacrifice that he was going to offer mm -hmm. and the proper response from those whom he chosen to experience and inherit eternal life. Therefore, it is most appropriate on this first Sunday of May, 2023, mm -hmm. Communion Sunday, mm -hmm. to examine Christ's words, mm -hmm. which are recorded in the sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some found Jesus' words to be offensive, while others misunderstood them, mm -hmm. but knew that Jesus, as his manner was, would explain his intentions by giving clarity to his listeners. Before we examine the scripture lesson, I will take a moment to brief our audience by commenting on the previous passages in chapter 6 mm -hmm. that will make it easier to connect the dots necessary 
to gain a meaningful and applicable understanding of our Lord's word. Mm. Even though the Passover feast of the Jews was near, according to John 6 and 4, where it says the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. Jesus was busy doing his Father's will throughout the chapter mm -hmm. by miraculously feeding 5,000 men mm -hmm. and later walking on water onto a ship containing his disciples who were afraid of a great storm in the sea. Mm -hmm. Verses 18 through 21. In addition to Christ's works, which I have referenced, he uses the efforts of the people who were stalking him for food mm -hmm. to give a detailed sermon on a type of food that they were not accustomed to by any means. Mm -hmm. Jesus spoke of a meal that had an entree called the bread of life, right. which he implied was his flesh, and a drink which consisted of blood to wash it down. Oh. What an entree. <laughs> he also described the bread of life in verse 35, where he says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Also called the bread of God, which came down from heaven in verse 33. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. So we see in those two verses that the words bread of life and bread of God are interchangeable as being the same. He also described this bread of life as being so nutritious, causing those that come to him and believe to never hunger or thirst again. Mm -hmm. Have you ever ate anything that filled you up so much you never had to eat again? Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> Have you ever drank something that filled you up so much that you never had to drink again? Mm -hmm. Well, I can say and I believe you say yes to those who have ate and the bread of life and drank the blood of Jesus Amen. that you never thirsted again. Mm -hmm. You may have inquired, mm -hmm. you may have looked at other things, mm -hmm. but you always saw yourself coming back to the truth. Mm -hmm. You always saw yourself coming back to the one that said, I am the way yeah, yeah. and the truth yeah. and the life. That's right. That's As previously mentioned, Jesus, the Lamb of God, knew that the Passover was near. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the timing was perfect for him to influence his disciples and the murmuring Jews to understand that he was the fulfillment of the Passover feast. For informational purposes, the feast included a lamb that would be killed and eaten. Mm -hmm. The blood of the lamb was to be sprinkled over the doorposts of houses mm -hmm. in the way that God instructed Moses and the Hebrew slaves before the exodus from Egypt. Mm -hmm. It is my goal in this communion meditation to identify and elaborate on the elements of communion by examining the heavenly elements of Jesus' flesh or the bread of life and his blood. Uh -huh. In verse 51, Jesus identified himself as the living bread that came down from heaven. Mm -hmm. And without hesitancy, he went on to say that any man that eats his flesh or the living bread mm -hmm. shall live forever. Is anybody out there going to live forever? Yeah. Amen. Don't think that a shut eye over here is a shut eye in heaven. Don't think that a last breath over here is a last breath in heaven. Amen. Because once you check out here, you're going to check in there. It's going to be so smooth, you won't even feel like it. Oh, 
Oh, it's going to be so wonderful to be away for all the troubles of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I listened to a little Mahalia Jackson this morning when she said, soon I will be done with the troubles of the world. Yeah. Praise the Lord, church. Yeah. Eat, drink, or else. <laughs> the benefits obtained by eating his flesh and drinking his blood are absolutely necessary for all. Mm -hmm. It's necessary for you. Mm -hmm. It's necessary for me. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I pray and trust that none of us will depart this earthly life mm -hmm. without these benefits. Mm -hmm. For example, consider verse 53, where he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, mm. ye have no life mm. in you. Mm. That's a serious matter yeah. to know that if you don't do something, you have no life in you. Mm -hmm. But guess what? The opposite of that is that if I do eat his flesh, mm. if I do drink his blood, right. yeah. I do have life yeah. in me. Yeah. In verse 54, he says, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, yes. and I will raise him up at the last day. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. I need that. I don't know about you. <laughs> I need that eternal life. Because even though when my spirit leaves my body to be with the Lord, I need him to raise up this body and give me a new one yes. at the resurrection. Yes. Can I get an amen? Yes. Verse 58. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. Do you remember when the children of Israel had come out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. And they were hungry, and God set it up where he mm -hmm. rained manna from heaven. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, I'm much better than this. Mm -hmm. They ate that, even though it came from heaven. And guess what? They're dead. Mm -hmm. But if you eat me, you'll never die. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. But at the end of verse 58, he says, He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Amen. Look at your neighbor, ask him, Did you eat your bread? <laughs> Did you eat your bread? Did you drink your blood? <laughs> Amen. And if you haven't, please. Eat your bread. Right. Eat that flesh. Uh -huh. Eat that living bread. Yeah. Right. And please drink that blood. Yeah. There are more reference, references in John chapter 6 that indicate the inseparable connection between the heavenly elements and eternal life. Uh -huh. It is suggested that you read the entire chapter mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Someone may be wondering, how is it possible to eat and drink the heavenly elements of Jesus' flesh, the bread and blood, to enable them to live forever? Mm -hmm. Simply put, eating Jesus' flesh and blood is a spiritual practice that must be practiced or exercised through and by faith. Mm -hmm. Remember in verse 35, let's take a look at it. Jesus said that a person must come and believe in order to satisfy hunger and thirst. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like faith? Mm -hmm. Jesus said that a person must come and believe mm -hmm. to satisfy this hunger and thirst. Mm -hmm. Coming is faith. Mm -hmm. Believing is faith. Mm -hmm. Listen to verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh mm -hmm. to me shall never hunger. Mm -hmm. We come in faith. Mm -hmm. Have you come in faith? And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Mm -hmm. Isn't that faith? Amen. The word of God says in Hebrews 11 and 6, mm -hmm. but without faith it is impossible to please God. Right. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So faith is God's way. I know it gets hard sometimes waiting. 
I know it gets hard sometimes when you see one, expect one thing and see the opposite. But that's how faith works. And when God sees that we're totally trusting him, when he sees that we've made up our mind, we won't murmur and complain. When he sees we've made up our mind that we're going to do our best not to die. At that right time, he brings the blessing. And that is how faith works. There are a couple of brief points that I will introduce before concluding this message. I trust that we will reflect on them while taking communion after I've concluded the message. Point one, we must believe the things that Jesus said in order to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Don't that make sense? We must believe the things that he said in order to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Just as the Passover lamb was eaten by the Hebrew slaves in Egypt, the flesh of the lamb of God is eaten by those who come by faith to obtain eternal life. Ain't that all right? <laughs> Amen. I remember a certain preacher in the country. Y'all have to excuse me. Red Spring. Every time she gets going, she say, "Ain't that all right? <laughs> Ain't it all right?" <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Therefore, when we eat by faith, we acknowledge that Christ died for us, mm. and His flesh, for the bread of life, was mm -hmm. given for us to live forever. Mm -hmm. To say that again. When we eat by faith, we acknowledge that Christ died for us mm -hmm. and his flesh or the bread of life was given for us mm -hmm. to live forever. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, when we drink his blood by faith, we are consuming the very life force mm -hmm. of his body. Mm -hmm. Just as blood is a life force mm -hmm. that neither humans or animals can live without, Jesus' blood is the life source mm -hmm. that we must drink in order mm -hmm. to live forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Almost sounds like we need to be a vampire. Mm -hmm. But like I said, this is a spiritual thing. Mm -hmm. And even at that time, some probably thought that Jesus was implying and promoting cannibalism. Mm -hmm. But he made all that clear as he went through mm -hmm. his sacrifice. When we drink his blood by faith, we are confident that we are dwelling in him. How about that? And he in us. Mm -hmm. Now that's important, isn't it? Mm -hmm. When we drink his blood by faith, we are confident that we are dwelling in him. You may ask yourself, am I dwelling in him? And he in us. Mm -hmm. You may ask yourself, is he dwelling in me? But according to 50, verse 58, that's just the way he wants it to be. Mm -hmm. Listen to verse 58. This is that bread that came down from heaven. Now as your father did eat manna and are dead, he that eat of this bread shall live forever. In order to drink his blood by faith, we must acknowledge that he was a perfect sacrifice. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7 that he was holy, harmless, mm -hmm. undefiled, That's right. separate from sinners, yeah. made higher than the heavens. Mm -hmm. And said when he went to heaven, he didn't even need to offer up mm -hmm. sacrifices as those Old Testament high priests. Because this he did once when he offered up himself. That's a wonderful person to come to in the time of prayer. Your advocate. Your attorney. I don't know about you, but I've been in some courtrooms. I'm not proud of it. But one thing about it, there's a time where your attorney can do all the talk and work it out you don't have to even say a word sometimes. But we have an advocate. Good God Almighty. Much greater than the late Rand Foundation firm. 
We have an advocate much greater than all of the big time lawyers. And his name is Jesus Christ. So we must acknowledge that he was a perfect sacrifice who did no sin. And that the blood he shed was pure and perfect. Mm. Anybody ever seen any pure and perfect blood? Mm. If you get a little cut, here come the flies and mosquitoes. <laughs> if some of it is gathered somewhere, the hospital is putting it in a container called a uh, biohazard mm. uh, storage. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the blood that we see uh, when there's a dead animal, it's just a detestable, mm. gross thing. Mm -hmm. But this blood of Jesus was perfect. Mm -hmm. It was pure. Mm -hmm. And because he lived without sinning, and God the Father, mm -hmm. you pay, while pay, understand in Hebrew, Church of Grammarton, and Yahweh, or Jehovah, yes. was his Father. Mm -hmm. So he lived without sinning, and God the Father was his father. Mm -hmm. What other per more perfect sacrifice than that? Amen. To have a Savior who got a parent named God. Yeah. <laughs> to have a Savior with a parent called God the Father. Yeah. Oh, I believe you can eat his flesh. I believe you can drink his blood. Mm -hmm. My final and second point is from uh, page 12 of the discipline. Mm -hmm. Draw near with faith mm -hmm. and take the holy sacrament mm -hmm. to your comfort. Mm -hmm. In order for the church to become better acquainted with the elements of heavenly communion, mm -hmm. Christ gave and instructed his disciples in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. This supper consisted of the elements of bread and wine. Mm -hmm which symbolized his body and his blood. Mm -hmm. There are many wonderful blessings in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 11, 25, and 26 mentions a couple of them. Verse 25 says, after the same manner, he took the cup when he had sucked, saying, This blood is the New Testament in my blood. Mm -hmm. This do ye as oft as ye drink mm -hmm. in remembrance of me. Mm -hmm. When we drink the blood of Jesus, we become connected to the New Testament. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We become and are disconnected from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. As far as the requirements for sin, and salvation. Mm -hmm. When we bleed, drink the blood of Jesus, we know that we are saved. Yeah. We know that we are washed. Yeah. We know that he's got us on his mind all the time. All the time. Yeah. We know that he's holding us in the palm of his hand. Yeah. When we drink the blood of Jesus, mm -hmm. we know that he'll give us joy in sorrow. Yeah. We know that he'll give us hope for tomorrow. Yeah. We know that he will be a doctor in the sick room. Yeah. We know that he will be a lawyer in the courtroom. Yeah. I'm so glad that we have the covenant of the New Testament yeah. because when I feel that my knees are overwhelming, I can turn over to Philippians 4 and 19 and say, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I love the New Testament because when I feel like I can't go any farther, when I feel like things got me back in a corner. I, I can look at Philippians 4 and 13 I, and say I can do all things through Christ I, which strengthens me. I, I thank God for the New Testament I, 
and I say with Paul, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. who has begotten us again by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. I thank God for the New Testament because I know that according to 1 Timothy 6 and 12, I can fight the good fight of faith. I can lay hold of eternal life. I thank God for the New Testament because according to 2 Corinthians 4, 18 and 19, although I'm troubled on every side, I am not distressed. Although I am perplexed, I am not in despair. Although I am persecuted, I am not cast down. Praise the Lord this morning, church. Also in the 11th chapter, in verse 26, he says, For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. As you take communion this morning, as you walk out the church, as you go to your house, when you look in the mirror, if you don't have anything to say, you can show the Lord's death by saying, Jesus died for me. Whatever you're going through this morning, I don't care how bad you're hurting. I don't care how bad you're worried. You ought to say, Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. And because he died for me, I'm going to live forever. And since I'm going to live forever, and though he, since he has so much power, no matter what Satan brings my way, I will be victorious. I will overcome. Because the God whose flesh I'm eating, the God whose blood I'm drinking, the God was crucified, dead, and buried, the God who rose from the dead is able to fight my battles, is able to give me the victory, is able to bring I'm not going to even be talking about that. As I get ready to close, I hope that you have been encouraged to eat, to drink, or else. I hope you are encouraged to understand the communion behind the communion. And after you take the, the sacraments this morning mm -hmm. and partake of the Eucharist say that Christ died for me say I'm a eater of his flesh say I'm a drinker of his blood let the church say amen Can somebody give the Lord a praise
over the building. Amen. I know most of us in here are already saved, but we are corporately together in prayer and unity. So we pray this morning and believe that anyone under the sound of my voice, anyone that's witnessing this service will say, I haven't eaten. I haven't drank. I don't have eternal life. I will not live forever. And somebody will say, I'm not going to put it off any longer. But I'm going to be saved. I'm going to receive the Lord. I'm going to give God a chance. I'm going to stop trying everything else but God. I'm going to try Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Let us agree, church. I'm going to briefly pray a prayer. For everyone under the sound of my voice who would like to live forever, to drink the blood, to eat the flesh of Jesus, to be on the Lord's side, to experience his blessings. To that one, I would say, repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Savior of the world, I believe and I desire to eat your flesh and to drink your blood by coming to you in faith that I may have eternal life. Please forgive me. Please save my soul. Save my soul, God. And put my name in the Lamb Book of Life. In Jesus' name. Amen.
then a man sin he have been advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is a perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbor, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith, and take the sacrament to your comfort, and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to the Almighty God. You may be seated. Brother Drake, would you lead us, sir, in the general confession? Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and beware of our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thoughts against our divine majesty, provoking most justly by wrath and in inclination against us. We do earnestly repent, and our heart is sorry for these obvious doings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for our Son, our Lord Jesus our Savior. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever be Son Jesus Christ to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father. We come to beseech thee and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eight, this is my body, which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the remission of, for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. My dearly beloved, let the deaconesses come.
Beloved, it was on the night that the Lord was betrayed that he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples. Says, hey, this is my body, which was given for thee. Let us take, let us eat all of it. And remember us that Christ died for thee for the preservation of the soul of the, and your body and of eternal life. Likewise, the supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink, eat all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament which is shed for you. For the forgiveness of sins, for the remission of sins. Amen. The preservation of the soul and body unto eternal life. Feast upon you in your heart with thanksgiving. And remember always to be loved and shared with your name. Let us now, amen, say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Let us bow. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in the love of this very wonderful Son, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Now may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost be with you and rest with you henceforth and forevermore and we'll all sing together.